Hello all, welcome to oratrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we create AR invoice and also some of the tables details of it. So let's start with what is AR invoice. So generally, like uh, when you try to create AR invoice, there are different types of invoice will come across. One is invoice, a generic invoice, a credit memo, as well as a debit memo. And uh, these are the header information and coming to the line information in the lines generally you'll have you'll have three kinds of lines receivables revenue and tax will not get into much of the functional area so the major concentration is on how do we create from ui and what are the main tables involved in it okay and also the standard report of it so in which particular cycle or a process AR invoice comes into picture. If you observe carefully, so generally AR invoice comes in the part of O2C cycle. And here, if you observe, generally, you know, you may start, we may start with sales order creation, then you may have an AR invoice, then receipt, cash management, and GL general. Okay. That could be the process, but you can also create them individually. Nothing but you can create AR invoice individually, and then you can, uh, in like, uh, what do you call, you can uh, post it to GL and the, you know, SLA stuff, all those things. Okay. Now, so let's see how do we create the invoice. Now let us say what is the navigation involved and how do we start with creation of it and what are the prerequisites? It? So to create AR invoice, of course, you may need to have the appropriate responsibility. And AR invoice is created for the like uh, if you want to create AR invoice, first of all, you require a customer. Okay, nothing but it's a receivable. You are receiving some amount on a particular sales order or you know like uh, maybe receivable information, right? So you're you need to create invoice on a particular customer okay nothing but like you need to have a customer created based on that only you can create invoice okay and of course it should have the bill to and a ship to location ship to is not mandatory but they have to have a bill to role okay so let's start so we'll just navigate to our uh, application so once you navigate to application and click on the receivables okay and then click on billing so once you click on building, it may show a screen like this and make sure that you have the appropriate BU roles and then click on the task. And here in the transaction area, so these are the information which is related to invoice. One is the first one here, if you observe create transaction and that this one is a credit transaction, credit memo, manage transaction is for the purpose of like, uh, if you're at all, if you want to update something, you can just go with that, okay? So now let's start with this one, click on create transaction. We want to create invoice so we'll just click on create invoice and now here if you observe it shows a set of fields which are mandatory like asterisk okay so now transaction class will go with invoice and a business unit so i'll just go with us1 business unit okay based on the business unit you may have the appropriate configuration you would have done already for the transaction sources to be displayed for the business unit so by default it populated these things of course you can change it and transaction number also you can have a auto auto generated transaction number or you can also have a uh, like a user enabled auto number i mean uh, entered field user entered field or auto numbering okay next one is the customer details so like uh, first thing is a bill to is mandatory ship to is not mandatory so i'll just select this Populist and uh, maybe I'll select some name, easy solutions, in search and account number. And uh, it may have the default ship to uh, primary bill to site will get populated and even the payment terms will be displayed based on that. Okay, this is the header information. And of course the amount of lines and tags will be, I mean, it'll get calculated when you enter the line number. Transaction number I'm not entering as of now. And uh, salesperson is not mandatory, but if at all, if you want to mention them, you can mention them, okay? Now let us start with entering the line details. Let us say line description, I'll just say, and uh, UOM, I'll just go with each and then quantity as 100,000, maybe the unit price is one. So for now, I'll just click on save. It will perform validation and also probably it will generate the invoice number or maybe we can call it as transaction number okay so as of now what are the data which we entered it would have populated around a couple of tables the first table i can tell you is this one is header part okay nothing but it will be stored in header information then there's a line information okay and also we have something called tax tax will also have a separate table and if at all if you would have entered sales credit it would have populated a sales table also okay so what i'll do is as of now our invoice number is this one and uh, let us enter the tax details also. Maybe you can just click on sales credit, oh, sorry, sales information, salesperson details. It, it has not populated anything for the sales. So I'll just click on now in the line information. So there are a few things which you can enter detailed information at line level. So just click on details 
So now in the detail level, we can mention the tax details as well as salesperson details also, sales credit details also. Just click on here in the sales credit, just click on add row. And you can mention what is the salesperson name, name or number. And based on that, you can mention the percentage. Let's uh, see, we'll try to check out with the person starting with A. Okay. I think, yeah, maybe Ralph. Okay. You can mention percentage or maybe you can just ignore if at all, if you don't want to mention anything. And now in the tax details, you can just click on edit tax lines. It would have, it will mention the existing tax lines if, if any of them are already available, you can also add up things. But how does these generated, like as we have not explicitly mentioned actually. So these would have been populated based on the tax configuration of your business unit, okay. Seven close. Okay. Now just try, click on sales credit. Can you see? It populated something, but you know, like as we have not mentioned the percentage, nothing was nothing, you know, like it is not displaying anything, right? So maybe you can just click on details and mention the percentage of information. Let's say percentage is 10. Okay, that's it. 10 percentage. The salesperson commission is 10%. Let's say it's like uh, okay. You must enter revenue sales credit for the line that equal to the line amount. Okay. What was the line amount we mentioned? Thousand. Okay. Now we can see this one. And here also you can see the tax lines, which we have mentioned at the line level. It tells you what is the line, what is a like invoice line, and this is a tax line. So for a single invoice line, we have two tax lines, okay? And this is a tax rate and this is a percentage, okay? Now the status of the invoice is incomplete, okay? So now what you can do is just click on in this particular button, second button and click on complete and review, okay? If at all, if any errors, it will populate, else the invoice status will get changed to complete. Right now, the status is complete, and when the status is complete, you will not have a delete option. And when the status is complete, then only this view image option will be shown. Just click on this view image; it will show a BI report, which is a standard like a report. Generally, most of the customers customizes this particular standard BI report. Okay, nothing but the template, or of course, of course, they mod they change the data model also. But this is one of the standard report of the print receivable transaction invoice. Okay. And now let us say, if at all, if you want to change something, okay, now what you can do, just click on incomplete. Once you change the status to incomplete, you can also delete the invoice, okay, this first thing, and you can modify the invoice, okay. And you can just see the distribution, click on actions, click on edit distributions, and you can check, you can see like how, when you create invoice, what level of account classes data it is getting populated. The last thing, if you observe, taxes, we know it gets populated, and the revenue information, okay, and the other one is the receivable information, okay. So out of this particular revenue, revenue was 1000, but in, in, in real time, what exactly you'll get? You'll get the revenue plus tax also, right? Nothing but for a customer, let us say 1000 he has to pay and the tax was 90 rupees, you'll collect 1090 definitely, right? So now revenue was, now actual revenue which you receive is 1000, but the total amount which you receive from the customer is 1090. That's why receivables was 1090, revenue was 1000 and the tax information is this one and of course the distribution this will be this would have been configured based on the your chart of account structure which generally has to be uh, defined before you start with creation of invoice okay so this is all about ar invoice creation maybe i'll show you some table information from my slide also so that we can remember them so first thing is the header level information i mean the main table set, main set of tables information the first one is ar invoice header ra customer transaction all then the invoice lines Transact customer transaction lines all. Okay, in the trans in the invoice lines table here, if you observe cust RA customer transaction lines all, you'll have the data of both uh, line type data as well as tax line data also. Okay, so for a given for a given invoice line, you may have multiple tax lines. There will be a linkage between the tax line with a line with a normal line also that we have to carefully understand. Then the other one is a distribution. It will have a linkage between the tax line. I mean, the line, line invoice line, I mean. Next one is the sales trip. Of course, we know it, it will have the information about the linkage between the invoice line. Of course, it will also have a linkage between the invoice header. Then the tax lines also again. 
now coming to the next one so there are dependent tables like customer information currencies inventory item receipt methods invoice rules and uh, business unit table batch sources these are some of the other dependent tables of course there are many other things like a payment uh, what you call payment terms are there and maybe if you consider the other information like when you click on show more it shows the other extra information which you may need to populate if required you can just click on that and maybe in the customer the payment information it will show payment terms miscellaneous you can check out the flexible information special instructions tax details po details all these things you can mention here okay so this all about uh, ar invoice in the fusion erp okay thank you